Okay, so one through four, pretty straightforward. Uh, that's just some operations on functions, meaning that you can combine functions in any manner that you want to. You can multiply them by a scalar multiple, you can add them together, you can multiply it by another function, you can even divide them, you just have to be careful as long as g of c doesn't equal zero, you can divide them and be continuous um, and everything. Now let's talk about the composite function a little bit because this is something that I didn't really get to cover in proof count the way that I wanted to. Okay, The composite function means that you are plugging some function into another function. For example, g of x is x cubed, f of x is sine of x, so the, uh, the composition of that means that I'm plugging x cubed into the sine of x function where I see x, so I replace x with x cubed. Uh, now, we could do that the other way, let me add that there. Uh, we can do g of f of x, the order does matter. Okay, if we plug f of x into g, that means where we see x in g, we're going to replace that with sine of x. So we would write that as sine cubed of x. Okay, when you have exponents with trig function, you put them between the trig function and the angle. Okay, so we're replacing the x with sine of x. So sine of x cubed or sine cubed. The order matters. But what it means is if the function that you're plugging in, so in this case x cubed, for whatever values that is continuous, x cubed to polynomial, so it's continuous everywhere, as long as f is continuous at those values, sine is continuous everywhere as well, then sine of x cubed is continuous. The star on the inside more than way high. X cubed is continuous everywhere, and then so that means you can take sine, you can take sine of any number, so that one is continuous as well. And in this case, the opposite g of f of x it is also continuous everywhere because both of those functions are continuous everywhere, so the composition either way is continuous everywhere. The inverse. Uh, if your function is continuous on an interval with the range of r, if your inverse exists, then the inverse is continuous with the domain of r. Remember, inverse means you switch x and y values. So if you're switching x and y values, then you're essentially switching your domain and range. So the domain of the inverse is the range of the original. We'll talk about that. That'll come up later on as well. Okay, so let's talk about the continuity of these functions using our properties of continuity and without a calculator. Okay? So f of x is equal to x plus the sine of x. I have no idea what that function looks like, but I don't have to know what that function looks like to talk about its continuity. Now, for the sake of the argument, I don't want you guys to graph them, but I'm going to graph it so you can see what this function looks like. Before I graph it, is x plus sine of x, what is its domain, or what is it continuous for? Okay, negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi. Any other answers? It's continuous everywhere, okay? This is the property that says we can add two functions. We're adding the function x to the function sine of x. Well, x is a polynomial, so it's continuous everywhere. Sine of x is that trig function that has a domain of all real numbers, so it's continuous everywhere. So their sum is continuous everywhere. Uh, here's the graph. Looks a little weird because uh, you're adding x to the value of sine of x, but it's continuous. There are no values that we won't get an answer for, okay? Um, so this is everywhere continuous. Study for that quiz tomorrow. Because we are adding two continuous functions.
Sometimes I will abbreviate continuous as C-O-N-T period. I wouldn't get in too big of a habit of doing that because not all abbreviations are universally accepted. I will tell you if it is. I don't, I mean, I would assume that this one is, but I don't know for sure. Uh, so I would not use it on the AP exam. Okay. Uh, B, g of x is equal to 3 tangent of x. So this is the scalar multiple. I'm just multiplying a function by a constant term. Scalar multiple says anywhere that the function is continuous, then the scalar multiple will be continuous. Well, tangent, if you will recall, has some discontinuities. Um, it is discontinuous. Oh, didn't spell that right. Discontinuous at, where is it discontinuous? Pi over 2 plus pi k. Pi over 2 plus pi k. And let's be in the habit of putting in parentheses k is an integer. Because if you don't tell them that, then, I mean, what does k represent? You need to define that k is an integer. Okay? you got to have that whole thing right there. Pi over 2 plus pi k in parentheses k is an integer. Got to have it. Okay, h of x is equal to x squared plus 1 over the cosine of x. Well, this is our uh, division. So we are concerned about the bottom equaling 0 is a problem. Okay, x squared plus 1, the numerator is... Um, Continuous everywhere. It's polynomial. Okay, so the numerator is continuous everywhere. Cosine of x is continuous everywhere. But when we put them in a ratio, we've got to worry about when cosine is equal to 0. So when does that happen? When, okay, cosine of 0 is, or excuse me, cosine is equal to 0 at pi over 2 and those multiples, 3 pi over 2, so forth and so on, that's why tangent is discontinuous where it is discontinuous. So this one has the same answer as B. It is discontinuous at the same places. Pi over 2 plus pi k because that's where cosine is equal to 0. Okay, example D, P of X is equal to the sine of 3X. Which rule is this? Composite. Okay, this is the composite rule. We are plugging 3X into the sine of X. This is the composite rule. So the composite rule says as long as wherever your two functions are continuous, then the composite is going to be continuous. So 3x is our first question. 3x is a polynomial. It's continuous everywhere. So then the question is, is the outside function, in this case sine, continuous everywhere? It is. So this composite function is everywhere continuous. And I always want to write continuous first. It really doesn't matter. But this is the terminology that they use. Everywhere continuous. I'm fine if you say continuous everywhere. Really don't matter. Okay. E Q of X. I'm just using a bunch of random letters here. Q of X is equal to the square root of X squared plus one. This is another composite function. We are plugging X squared plus one into the square root of X is one way of looking at it. Otherwise, y'all just know that it's a square root function, so what's under the square root has to be greater than 1, or not greater than 1, greater than or equal to 0. I said 1 because it has 1 in it. 
So x squared plus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0. Is it? Are there any restrictions on that? No. x squared is a positive number. Add 1 to it, still a positive number. So this one is everywhere continuous, even though most of the time... Uh, most of the time square root functions have a restricted domain. This one does not. This one does not have a restricted domain. Anything works. Okay, two more and we'll be done. Okay, r of x is equal to x cubed times the cosine of x. This is a product. x cubed is a polynomial. Cosine of x is continuous everywhere. So this is everywhere continuous. Just for kicks, I wonder what x cubed times cosine of x looks like. Let's find x cubed times the cosine of x. Ooh, that crazy. The values get really big on the ends, which makes sense because we're cubing x, that's going to give us big numbers, and then multiply it by the cosine of x, so it kind of makes sense that the ends go crazy like that. Um, that's what it looks like if you're curious. Okay, last one, another square root. Okay, technically this is another composite function. Plugging x plus 4 into the square root of x. Uh, but our concern is what's under the radical, is that greater than or equal to 0? Sometimes. When x is greater than or equal to 4. So I would say this function is continuous for negative 4 to infinity. Continuous for negative 4 to infinity. Anything less than negative 4, you're out of luck. It doesn't exist. So it can't be continuous if it doesn't exist. Okay, so um, we will start